All right, hello, greetings. So this week will be a very basic introduction to modeling chemical reactors in uh, ChemCAD. We'll have more discussions in class, but hopefully these videos will um, reinforce a few of the examples that we'll work on in class. And so in problems one through four, um, we're gonna model a, a steady state gas phase reaction. So we're gonna have the decomposition of DTBP um, to form acetone and ethane. And so in problem one, we'll look at a stoichiometric reactor. Then we'll look at an equilibrium reactor. We'll look at a Gibbs reactor in problem three. And then problem four, we'll consider a CSTR and PFR, which we'll model using um, a kinetic reactor. So a stoichiometric, equilibrium, um, Gibbs, and then uh, finally kinetic. And then in problem five, we'll consider a different liquid phase reaction to model a batch reactor, which is a vessel reactor in ChemCAD. Okay, so all right, so problem one um, tells us that we're gonna use the stoichiometric reactor to model this, this process. So let's get this set up in ChemCAD. Let's look at the stoichiometric reactor, then we'll stop and then we'll transition in a second video to uh, equilibrium reactor. Okay. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna to go to in, in ChemCAD is I'm gonna adjust my units. And so just looking at the problem statement, um, we're gonna have temperatures in degrees C and pressures in millimeters of mercury. Okay, so just to keep in mind, so as I come over here, I'm going to start by um, playing with my engineering units. And so I'm going to go to common SI as always. For my unit of mole or mass, I'm going to make it kilomole. Right? We're going to have a flow rate of kilomoles per hour. Temperature in terms of degree C is fine. I'm going to make my pressure millimeters of mercury. Okay. All right, so time, I'm going to use hours since my flow rate was in kilomoles per hour. When we model our kinetic reactor in problem four, right, we will need to take note of this because our rate expression uses units of minutes, and so I'll show you how to make that adjustment within the reactor. Okay. So we'll click apply. Next, I'm going to add my components. Okay. So in terms of components, I'm going to have DTBP, this diterpbutyl peroxide, uh, then acetone and ethane. So let's see if I can get diterpbutyl di terpbutyl terpbutyl peroxide di terpbutyl peroxide so here we go di terpbutyl peroxide and i'm going to form acetone and ethane okay so i have my three components great and I could be as um, worried about my um, excess Gibbs free energy model here. Okay. So it says I'm missing uh, unifac groups. Right? So just to make it complete, so in the thermodynamic settings, I'll you know fill unifac bit matrix using Cosmos SAC generated data if, if bits are missing. Okay. So let, but um, but all right. So, okay, so here's my reaction. So I'm gonna have some flow rate um, into my stoichiometric reactor. So under reactors, I'm gonna first model the stoichiometric reactor. Okay, and I'm gonna have some feed, which is specified. Okay, so you can have multiple feeds. And then I'm gonna have a single product stream. Okay, so my stoichiometric reactor we're going to be restricted in that I can only have a single reaction. It could be liquid or gas phase. We'll specify. So you can only have a single reaction. You need to define the stoichiometry, and then we're going to need to define the extent of reaction. Okay. Um, so there will be no input of kinetic data or anything else. We have to define the chemistry of a reaction, um, but then we're, we need to define the extent of reaction or that single pass conversion for a reaction. And then ChemCAD will perform the mass and energy balance for that process. Okay, so in stream one, my input. Okay, so we have a stream which is pure DTBP. So I'm going to specify a mole fraction of one. A flow rate of 100 kilomoles per hour. And it's at 110 degrees C. And we're told the pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. Okay, great. 
Now in terms of my reactor, right? So this is a stoichiometric reactor. So we can only have a single reactor or single reaction. It could be gas or liquid phase. I need to define the stoichiometry of my reaction, right? So that needs to be defined. And then I'll define my extent of reaction. Okay. Additionally, I need to specify an operating mode, right? So I can specify that my reaction is going to take place adiabatically. So that means um, no heat is being added to or removed from my system. It can operate isothermally, where I'll specify the temperature that heat will be added to or removed from my system to maintain that constant temperature. Um, or I could specify a heat duty. So I can have a fixed Q um, being added to um, or removed from my system. Um, and then we can monitor the, the temperature change uh, for that given reaction. Okay. Um, and so in terms of the first part, we're told that we want to model this initially as an isothermal reaction or isothermal reactor at 154 degrees. So 154.6 degrees C, right? So heat will be added to or removed from my system to maintain a constant temperature of 154.6 degrees C. Okay, and remember my feed is 110 degrees C. So we're gonna operate at a slightly higher temperature. Okay, now my key component, where the key component comes in is I'm going to have to define a fractional conversion. My fractional conversion needs to be defined with respect to something. Okay. Now, in this problem, it's not all that interesting because I just have a single reactant. Okay. Um, and so I need to specify a key component. Okay. My key component right, is typically going to be um, a reactant. Right? And if I could have multiple reactions occurring, or well, in this case, I can only have a single reaction occurring, um, but I could have multiple reactants. Okay, one could be available in excess, um, one could be a limiting reactant, right, regardless. And so I'm going to dis, uh, define um, my key component, right, in this case I just have a single reactant, so that choice is easy. It is going to be my um, DTBP, okay? and then I need to specify the conversion, right, the fractional conversion of that key component. So we're told to model this as having a fractional conversion of DTBP of 85%. And again, that key component is typically a reactant. If I have multiple reactants, right, one might be available in excess, um, one might be a remitting reactant, right, and so I can choose when I specify the conversion which component I want to define the conversion with respect to. Okay. So I'm going to specify a fractional conversion of 0 0.85, so 85% of um, DTBP. Okay, cool. In terms of stoichiometric coefficients, we're going to do this on a mole basis. And so when I come back over here, okay, remember reactants are going to have negative stoichiometric coefficients. Products are going to have positive stoichiometric coefficients. So DTBE is going to have a stoichiometric coefficient of negative 1. Okay. In terms of acetone, um, that's going to have a stoichiometric coefficient of 2. And then ethane, 1. So this will be 2, and this will be 1. Cool. All right. So now in terms of I'm going to have a gas phase reaction. And so I'm going to choose as my basis an ideal gas state. And so from this drop down menu, I'll choose ideal gas state. Okay. Cool. So if I press OK, and now I run selected. Okay. First, if I go back to my reactor, so for my reaction um, with an 85% conversion, right, we'll see that I'll calculate the uh, heat duty. So again, by heat duty, that's the heat that needs to be added to or removed from my system in order to maintain a constant temperature of 154.6 degrees C. Okay. Um, it's negative, right? So that's going to correspond to what? Heat is being removed from my system. If I look at the calculated heat of reaction, right, the heat of reaction is negative, right, which tells me that it's exothermic, right? So heat's being released. So it's exothermic, heat's being released, which is causing, which would cause my temperature to increase. Okay. So I have a heat of reaction of, this is in kilojoules per kilomole, so this would be joules per mole, of negative 177,150 kilojoules per kilomole or, or joules per mole. Okay. So my heat of reaction is negative, heat's being released, which if this were um, running adiabatically, right, would cause my temperature to increase. The calculated heat duty is this negative 10,339.9. Right, and so it's 
Heat duty is also negative because heat needs to be removed in order to maintain this constant temperature of 154.6 degrees C. Okay, it's exothermic, so the temperature would otherwise be higher than 154.6 if it was running adiabatically, right? And so heat needs to be removed to maintain that constant temperature of 154.6 degrees C. Okay. Cool. If I click on my product stream, right, again. I have an 85% conversion of um, DTBP. It's not a super exciting problem. I started with 100 kilomoles per hour of DTBP. Uh, I have a conversion of 85%, and so I'm left with just 15 um, kilomoles per hour of DTBP, DPBP, um, and then here's my product, right, my acetone and ethane, which are formed. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, that's that's running isothermally, okay. Um, so, you know, our heat of reaction is, is negative, so it's exothermic, heat's being released. Okay, the heat duty is negative, right? Heat needs to be removed in order to maintain that constant temperature of uh, 154.6, okay. Uh, if the conversion was increased to 95%, would you expect the heat duty to increase, decrease, or stay the same? Well, if I increase the conversion in 95%, more heat's going to be released, so more heat's going to need to be removed, okay? So just to look, heat duty is negative 10,339. So if I make my conversion 95%, okay, I'm gonna have a greater extent of reaction, right? More heat's going to be generated. And so more heat needs to be removed in order to maintain that constant temperature, okay? The heat of reaction remains the same, right? That's my, my intrinsic property. Um, and so that's just, you know, the, the heat being released per mole of, you know, um, uh, per mole of DTBE uh, reacting, okay? Um, this is an extensive quantity, right? This is intensive, right? So that's not going to change. This is my extensive quantity. And so as more DTBEs being reacted and, and converted, right, the amount of heat that I'm going to need to remove is, is going to increase. So uh, as conversion increases, the heat duty would increase. Um, if we were to model this um, adiabatically, okay, so again, what's going to happen is if we model this adiabatically is we have an exothermic reaction. Heat's going to be released. That's going to cause the temperature of my um, temperature of my reaction to, to increase, or the temperature of my reactor to increase. So if I were to make this 0 0.85, and now I, I switch to operate adiabatically, Okay, now you'll see this is still gray. It's like this um, temperature here, right? It's still gray for a temperature. Um, ugh, it's still gray here. So, so what'll happen is, well, let me run it. And so when I run it adiabatically, that means I'm not adding or removing any heat. So the heat duty we'd expect to become zero because I'm not going to add or remove heat. Um, but then it'll calculate um, the corresponding temperature of my reactor. Okay, remember, um, yeah, so let me run selected, okay, so when I run selected, right, the heat duty goes away because I'm not adding or removing any heat from my system, and so essentially it's just zero, and then, you know, isothermal, right, this would be the corresponding, you know, temperature, right, if I'm not adding or removing any heat from my system, right, so it computes a temperature of 468.616 degrees C, okay, and so I could think of this as being like a CSTR, that's going to be my temperature of my exit stream uh, here. Okay, so you know this temperature is the same as that temperature, you know, that I specified for the isothermal case of my reactor, or that's being computed now if I'm operating uh, adiabatically. Okay, so we have a much higher temperature. All right, my product distribution is still exactly the same um, because I am assuming, or I specified an 85% conversion. Cool, and um, that is essentially the the problem, right? And, you know, the one note here, okay, is just this is a gas phase reaction. So even if I were to run this isothermally, let me go back and let me just actually run this isothermally at 110 degrees C, okay? So if I were to come back here and I specify 110 degrees C, all right, isothermal operation. So, okay, my inlet stream, or right, I'd have 100 kilomoles per hour of DTBE, right? And it's a gas phase, okay? Um, so, or, well, actually, it's the DTPE, DTBE going in, it's, it's I have a liquid, but I have 100 kilomoles per hour of liquid DTBE, okay? Now, coming out, 
okay, I have a vapor phase, right? So I've, you know, I'm still at 110 degrees C, right? So I'm still at, still at 100, oh, I was 100 degrees C. This is supposed to be a 110 degrees C. Ah, we've got this. So my last numbers are slightly off. That's supposed to be 110, right? Not a big difference, okay? But if this is coming in at 110 degrees C in 760 millimeters of um, mercury, and have 100 kilomoles per hour of liquid DTBE. Coming out now, I have a gas phase. Okay, and now I have you know total flow rate of 270 kilomoles per hour. Okay, um, going in liquid, coming out vapor, 270 kilomoles per hour at the same temperature. Um, you know, one might expect the pressure to change, right? But you notice that the pressure is is unchanged. And so even if you had a gas phase reaction, of you know if this were you know, instead of a gas going in, okay, and then I have, you know, and it's an ideal gas, and I have a gaseous product coming out, and I've created more moles now, right, if the number of moles is increasing in my product stream, and temperature is fixed, so if temperature is fixed, number of moles is increasing, I'd expect the pressure to also increase. Um, but you'll notice, oh, but you'll notice, right, in our reaction, or reactor, right, that we're not able to account for that. Okay, so just a, a note, right, in terms of one of these subtle limitations of my stoichiometric reactor, it'll happen with our equilibrium reactor as well. When we get to our kinetic reactor, if I want to model this as a PFR, right, I could specify a pressure drop or a change in pressure, um, but, yeah, ChemCAD's not going to perform the, or perform the calculation for you. Okay. But there's my kinetic reactor. I'm going to stop. I'm going to pick up right here, switch out my kinetic reactor, and put in an equilibrium reactor.